Hello everyone, this is Jürgen Sack of Music Graphics International in London. In this video I'm going to illustrate a process of laying out a full orchestral score, in this particular case an opera score, um, from files that uh, have not been laid out in any way, shape or form. Um, doing this on a Windows 7 64-bit system um, with a bunch of batch files and Visual Basic uh, um, applications in Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel and a few ancillary utilities and things like that. The, the Everything related to the score program or anything that runs from a command prompt and that is 16-bit uh, will be uh, running in DOSBox and DOSBox will be used only for that purpose launching applications that uh, are 16-bit. As soon as, as soon as any of those appli applica applications are done doing their uh, work, uh, DOSBox closes and we'll be back at uh, CMD at the command prompt, <coughs> the CMD command prompt in, in Windows 7 uh, to run everything else from. Um, the scenario is as follows. Uh, a team of engravers has received um, full orchestral score templates accounting for um, all instruments that uh, occur in this particular work and all the vocal parts that occur in this particular work. They've also received a copy text on, pa on paper, a manuscript on paper from which they can copy. They are uh, at this point working, they're working independently um, uh, but they're working at the same time on different sections of this particular work um, which allows for uh, the speedy entry of this music without having to worry about um, page layout in advance, which is always a problem with the score program. Um, in many ways, therefore, the work process is, simil is sim similar to how people are accustomed to working in Finale, in Finale or in Zibelius for the same, for, for that matter. Uh, let's say in the case of Finale, you would be um, having a copy text and you would just enter all the information as you see it uh, into what's called scroll view which gives you the uh, full um, instrumental um, setup uh, of all instrumental forces that appear in the particular number that you're working on. And once you have all the information in the file, in the finale file, then you switch over to what's called page view and you start, start doing your page layout there. Now it's obvious that a good, engraver, a good engraver should be able to look at a musical score and come up with a page layout plan in advance uh, setting up, uh, determining how many measures will go into each system, um, how many uh, staves are going to be in the system, how many systems will go on any particular page, etc. Um, you can do that with a score program. Of course, in most cases, you will have to come up with such a layout plan in advance. You'll set up your templates and then you enter your information. The trouble with that approach is that it um, um, really does not allow independent people to uh, enter information at once from, from the same work into the computer because if they do that they will need to have already uh, have a page layout plan uh, in hand unless they do page layout themselves. Um, that can be difficult to coordinate. So again the scenario in this particular case is that a team of engravers uh, has um, proceeded to uh, enter different sections of this particular opera into the computer is that they then submit their files, their totally unedited files. Um, it doesn't matter really what staff size they use to, uh, to um, enter the information into. It also doesn't matter, they, don't, they can just basically copy one manuscript uh, at a page at a time into one score page at a time or split it up in whatever the way they, are, uh, they feel comfortable. There's no need to uh, flip back and forth between manuscript pages in order to you know, determine what score files things need to go into. So again, the, the uh, set of score files in this particular case is of one full number that hasn't been edited. Uh, and there's no measure layout. There's uh, no staff optimization. It's just, just full orchestral score templates. And I'm going to begin by, first of all, unzipping the files for this number. I use the old-fashioned unzip dot exe uh, command line utility for that. That's also a 16-bit application that will not run in CMD. So when I unzip, when I give the unzip command from CMD, a, a, a DOS box session will launch automatically, which will then unzip the files. And once they're unzipped, the DOS box session is going to close and we'll be back at CMD. So let me begin with that. 
here DOSBox launches, unzips the files, and closes again. Now I have my set of .muse files from this particular number. And there's 43 of these files. This has uh, nom nomenclature beginning with P179A all the way through P221A.muse. And let me just uh, throw up the first of these files in score 3, P179A. Again, this goes into DOSBox. Uh, score is launched within DOSBox. This is the first of these files. Let's have a quick look at it. And scrolling up and down, you see that there's a total of 18 staves. Let me just turn the staff numbers off, off on this. Staff numbers are now off. Um, there's a flute, an ottavino, or a piccolo, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, French horn, trumpet, trombone, timpani, uh, three vocal parts, and then the string apparatus. Let me go to the next file. Again, look at the top. You'll see it's 18 staves. If I turn the staff numbers off there, you'll see it's the same instrumentation, flute, ottavino, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, etc., etc., down the line. Um, and you'll see that there's a bunch of empty staves in there. Those will probably be optimized or thrown out when we do our final layout, but for now, they're in here, just like they would be, uh, pretend that uh, you know, you're looking at scroll view in Finale, where you go from uh, you know, measure to measure, and you'll always have the same number of staves. This is essentially what we have here. Okay, so I'm going to, um, I just wanted to give a quick view of uh, how these uh, score files are set up. Um, in, as the first thing we're going to do is we're going to f uh, f uh, shoot all these files through the page program. And in the, into the page program, we're going to feed information about the target staff size. Because it's the target staff size that will determine how many measures I will be able to fit onto a system. That's why I'm saying right now, it doesn't matter at all what staff size for input, inputting purposes, uh, the engravers uh, that have prepared these uh, data files, these input files, have used because it's going to be changed now when we feed it into the page program anyway. It's completely meaningless what they, what they do that it doesn't matter at all. So we're going to feed it into the page program, we're going to tell the page program what staff size to use, and then we're going to let page suggest a measure distribution. This is essentially equivalent to go, going from scroll view in Finale to page view in Finale uh, and seeing uh, um, what Finale suggests for the measure distribution uh, for this particular for that this particular piece, given you know a certain page size and staff size specifications. Essentially, that's what we're doing now: taking these full uh, orchestra files and running them through the page load for a quick um, measure, measure layout distribution scheme. I launched the process with a batch file that is called Go One and then uh, let the process run invoking different edit score, edit score scripts, uh, some ancillary programs, etc. But basically the process uh, then uh, runs automatically and I'm going to uh, comment as I see things happening on screen to explain what's happening.